welcome to TAP TV. Today, the seventh day of September 2023. In case you're joining us for the first time and you're wondering what this program is about, this is the newspaper review, a segment where we dissect and analyze trendy and catchy headlines in the daily newspapers every day. I am Obed Jerry, your host for today, and as usual, we'll not be doing this alone. I have here with me an amiable personality, Mr. Victor Sioko. Mr. Victor, you're welcome to this program. Man, it's good to have you. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, we, problem, we'll go with the problem. knuckles. Yeah, it's good to have welcome. you. Welcome. Yeah, Hope thanks. your night was good yeah, after the yeah. judgment, the outcome <laughs> of the judgment. Yeah, that took more than 12 hours to deliver. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, it was just... like an, 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 an actual judgment today. You know, when your mother goes to the market, you're waiting for her to return, you cannot sleep because you don't know where she went to, when she's coming back and all that. Yeah. You'll be at the forefront of your door, yeah. standing and waiting. Waiting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, so we you. proceed to the papers of the day. We are starting with this day newspaper. The headline reads, Election Court Validates Tinubu's Presidency. Five key takeaways. Abuja now effectively 37 states. 25% votes not required. Beavers dumped. Electronic transmission of result discretionary. Tinubu's $460,000 $460, for future not criminal. President's candidacy fit and proper. Tinubu welcomes, pre pre sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. Tinubu welcomes presidential election petition tribunal's verdict. Six collective efforts to build Nigeria. Pledges to exceed people's expectation in service delivery. PDP, Labour Party, rejects tribunal ruling. Buhari, Ganduje, APC, others react to judgment. More details of this story can be found of in page 39 of the This Day newspaper. Nigeria, India roundtable business. Details can be found inside the This Day newspaper. So Mr. Victor, help us and tell us your thoughts on this headline, Election Court Validates Tinubu's Presidency. <laughs> Wow, um, the results came out, and uh, to some Nigerians, it came as a shock. Yes. While to some Nigerians, it was more like, yeah, yes. um, it, had to, yeah it had to come this way. Okay, um, but let's not also forget, in the spirit of uh, um, being Nigerians, and yeah, politics as well. I understand that many of us as Nigerians, we are so emotional, okay? But right. mind you, but mind you, the court, the justice system, does not care about emotions. Exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. They go by details on what is there on the Constitution for them to interpret. So, I think what happened yesterday um, shows that uh, a whole lot of uh, job needs to be done by uh, our lawmakers, okay? Reason because you find out that there are many lacunas, there are many spaces that needs many to be filled. Holes. Yes, that need to be filled so that uh, we can strengthen this democracy. But I know, yes, yeah, some people out there are like, come on, come on. It is Nigeria. You cannot get anything good from the judiciary, especially in a situation whereby the uh, judiciary has also tainted their image um, in several ways. They've uh, given out judgments that were not, uh, that were not in court rights. Okay, in the eyes of the Judgments common man, not proper. yeah, in the eyes of the common man, you just be like, come on, are you not supposed to protect the citizens? Are you not supposed to protect the common man out there? But we've seen instances and uh, situations whereby, in quotes, they might, they might, they were more likely compromised. Okay, so um, that also reduced the faith and the hope of Nigerians when it comes to the judicial system. Okay, I like that word, compromised. Yeah, because it seems like the judiciary has been compromised. So, my, my question now is, do you think the judgments that they gave yesterday was fair? Knowing that, at first, they said you have to, every candidate has to have 25% votes in 18 states, right? Plus the FCT. Now, their ruling yesterday was that FCT has become a 37 state. And then 25% vote is no more required. Well, uh, aside the FCT, FCT case, there are other cases out there. I think, see, we cannot dissect all the information here. But let me pick one that I, I, I have been wrapping my head around 
okay, with the respect of the $460,000 that the president forfeited while in the U.S. due to a drug trafficking matter. So now, see, this is called to, let's also not be emotional, okay? And mind you, for the courts to, the, for the judges to um, um, go to any side of the case, as in picking what, sides, uh, picking sides uh -huh, they need to scrutinize the evidences on their table. Thoroughly. Yes. So I think for that $460,000 issue, what did they say? They said that it was not a criminal case, that it was a civil case. Okay? So I think it was less for the, the, the PDP or the Labour Party to come up with strong evidence to show that Ahmed Bola Tinibu was convicted. convicted. Okay. He was even convicted. He was even stripped of some money. Yes, he was. It, it was said that he and forfeited and 400 and in the U.S. in Chicago. Then it was a criminal offense. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the evidences to really show that he was convicted? Because what were they saying? Mind you, I say that this particular case, I, I, I see some gray areas in this case because they also made a point that did not. I did not feel so comfortable with reason because the judges were like, for the fact that Bola Ahmed Tinibu still travels to the U.S., my brother, that is not an issue, okay? If you are being convicted in the U.S., you can still travel to the U.S. and back. So for them to say that they don't believe that he was convicted because, because he, he travels, really. uh -huh. to me, it does not personally. It doesn't count. It, it doesn't add. It doesn't add up for me, okay? But in the case also, oh, where do we, where do we, <laughs> Okay, in the case of INEC, which I think they are the major issue that we are having right now yeah. in, in, with the respect to uh, transmitting the result electronically from polling use to the IREF. They are just the main reason for this court case. Because, assuming, because from the onset, they said they would transmit the results in real time instantaneously once the result comes out. Then all of a sudden, yesterday, the court ruling was that the INEC, doesn't, the INEC has the right to, to upload results whatever way they want. But that was not what they said in the initial time. Yes, what they said with their mouth was different from what was in exactly. the Constitution. Exactly. Are you getting me? So, the, for the court, I think they interpreted that part properly, personally. Yes, INEC has been opening their mouth to spread the information that they were going to transmit the result electronically, that nothing was going to stop them, that this politician, this will be the end of rigging and all that, and, and at the end of the day. Giving us hope. Yeah, you I were not see. able to transmit these results. And now, oh my God, the issue of the, the server not um, having glitches, P2B and the Labour Party brought a witness. I don't know whether that witness was part of the 10 witnesses out of the 13 witnesses that we are shocked off. Okay? So that is another part. Is it that, oh God, is it that the, the, the Labour Party were not prepared? But on the other hand, the Labour Party um, uh, um, um, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Edun, was, was being asked some questions about the witnesses and was like, see, that, mind you, the court were like, they brought the witnesses um, on the bad time, as in they were supposed to bring the witnesses before the petition. Before it started. Yes, okay. And uh, they were like, no, that they needed to, the court to give a subpoena, that's it, to give a, an order for the witnesses to come. Okay, so these are the, the, they were like, the, law, the lawyer was like, man, he has not seen this, that this is so strange for the judges to be saying that. They, were, they did not provide the witnesses at the appropriate time. They were like, come on, it is the, the court that is supposed to give the order for these witness, the witnesses to come. But my issue is that why were they also allowing this, the, the witnesses to talk and so, to, mm -hmm. to express their, their thoughts when you are not going to use... What's the, the essence of the evidence? Exactly. Why are they wasting the time? 
Okay, that's my question now. Why waste the time for the witnesses? And, and at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the day, you are not saying that these witnesses were not supposed to be there. Okay, so these are the issues here. But but at the end of the day, yes, um, some points have been made. It is now left for uh, the parties, the aggrieved parties, the PDP uh, yeah, and Labour Party, then the APM. I don't know whether those guys will go further, so, okay? Because, see, um, cases like this involves a whole lot of money. Yes. Money, time, yeah. resources. So I don't know whether this third party will be able, whether they still have the backbone to, to press on. On their own part, they, they really hammered about the candidacy of Shetima whether he was right to contest for the election. But the, the tribunal came with, for me, is a valid point, came with a valid point that the candidate, candidature of Shatim, um, uh, Shetima was supposed to be a party issue. So an internal affair. Internal affair. And we've had instances about that. I think that one has been, has been taken care of over the years. Okay, that when you are having candidature issue, it should be within, your within party. the party. The same judgment came for P2B because the, the, the APC also came out with that point that P2B yes. was not qualified. Because it wrong. from PDP. Uh -huh. to Labour so they were like, see, this is about the Labour yeah. Party. It is something they should have taken care of within themselves and not a top party coming in to talk about this. But you know, there was a time, I think, last year or last two years, when a sitting governor switched parties and he resorted to a court case. I think um, David Umai of Ebony State. Mm -hmm. But those cases, right now, it should be about the parties. The parties are the ones to take care of those cases and not you from another party come and put eye for them. They even quoted the case of uh, River State in 2015 when the man, I can't forget that, I can't remember that man's name that almost became the governor overnight, okay? And uh, we had that case about his, his, uh, his candidature, whether it was valid or not, but that was from that time, that was when this case was settled, that anything about the, 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 the party and its, and its candidates should be taken care of by the party and not by a third party. Okay, now, since they still other the aggrieved parties still have the option of going ahead to um, tender their pleas at the Supreme Court. Do you think there is still hope for them? Do you think oh, sure. the, the, um, the their mandate can still be retrieved? Oh sure. See, yeah, for the fact, yes, I might also be on the path of feelings and emotions. Okay, feelings and emotion in the sense that I think, I think, oh man, I think that. <laughs> for the furtherance of the service, that's what they say in our church, okay? <laughs> for the furtherance of the service and for peace Sweet. to reign, this might just be for Tinibu to just have his way and have his four years, okay? Remember, if you go back to one of his quotes that he was talking about, he was with uh, um, some, uh, some of his goons, some of his uh, people during the, before the election, yes. Some of his campaign guys, he was like, see, go out there and get the results. Let's win by any means. Yes. So that has come Rabbit, to the knowledge now. It, exactly. You, re it. you remember. So now that's to tell you that, see, it all boils down to INEC announcing the results. Once INEC announces the results, yes, you have a point other ones can be taken care of. Then yesterday, if you notice, the president was not even in the country. Eh, that one is not a, for me. It's not an issue because uh, he has people that he has, he has delegate, already, delegated those advocates. functions for. And yeah. then another thing that helped him, I think, is power of incumbency. He has been uh, announced president already, so it's it's it has never. He's already a there. president. Uh, Where is sitting this, president yes. will be removed and another. You know the kind of anarchy that it will cause. Oh, <laughs> let me keep okay. it there. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Tinubu also said he pledges to exceed people's expectation in service delivery. You know, people are already uh, downplaying his 100 days in seats, saying things are getting worse and all that. And do you think now, another question I want to ask, do you think we as a country now, let's say collectively, we can heal over this? Or do you think this um, ruling of this court, now let's say even when they get to the Supreme Court, the outcome still 
looks the same way. Do you think Nigerian um, politics or government as a whole would would further would uh, advance or continue through rigging? See, eh, Nigerians we are wired differently from many countries of this world. Okay, we move on quickly. Go to the streets, find out that people have moved on with their lives. Okay, that's why Felas sang that song, uh, "Suffering and Smiling." We sometimes don't, don't feel those suffer. Okay, we we'll just be smiling and be pushing on, having hope and faith that my own will be better. I will make it and I'll make it. So, whatever the politicians are, politicians are doing, many Nigerians will be like, come on, leave them. My own, let me fetch for myself. So, for, for, for the atmosphere out there, I see an atmosphere of calmness. You see that the uh, Nigerians have moved on, though. The question now is the Supreme Court. Will they be able to also interpret better than? I'll keep it that way. Better than because I think there were some uh, lacunas, there were some gray areas that were not touched. Okay, but at the end of the day, can we be able to straighten the words and letter of our constitution pertaining to elections? Because there because are many the, gray areas the here. Interpretations always contradict themselves. Yes. This court will interpret this. Next time, another court will interpret that. When you check them, they are not telling. They are not even going in the same line. Okay, now, you see, like you rightfully said, Nigerians will move on easily. But at times, it's most times fear. The, um, when you react, the outcome that follows it. And then another thing is, they know that the country has been corrupt. For years back, if we come, most the average Nigerian believes that okay, if I come out today and vote, my vote will not count. Most of, and knowing that this year records the high, one of the highest numbers of voters. That is that is where we are we are getting it all wrong in this country, that we did not utilize the opportunity that was given to us when we noticed that Nigerians were ready to go out and vote. What then happened? Are you are, are you sure that we we'll have half of that number? Come 2027. Exactly, because there were clips of people breaking their voters' PVCs, cards, yeah. complaining, denouncing. I'm no more from Nigeria and all that. Some persons, the Jackpot syndrome, when you travel out, you sell all your properties, tell bye bye to Nigeria. <laughs> so you see. So in all we are trying to say is we want a better Nigeria, regardless of what is being interpreted. For the fact that they interpret the the verdicts, their verdicts are pure and real that the common man will be free and fair, will face the same life. Since we are all Nigerians, we are at the same level aside financial status, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we move on to the next headline, the Daily Times. It says, Labour Party rejects tribunal verdicts, weep for democracy in Nigeria, as PEPC upholds Tinubu's victory. Tinubu, Ganduje, others react to PEPC verdict on presidential poll. Page 9. Be ready for indefinite strike if federal government fails to react appropriately to Nigerians' yearnings. The Nigerian Labour Congress. Details of this could be found on page 5 of the Daily Times newspaper. Reps summon ministers. Mm. 2023 PEPC judgment. Failure to unseat sitting president resonates. At presidential level, nothing changes in national political dynamics. Akwaibom adds 5 billion naira to support federal government's palliative. Now let's talk on Labour Party rejects tribunal verdicts, whips for democracy in Nigeria. What are your thoughts, Mr. Victor? Yeah, you know, Labour Party, they are, well, well I say, experiencing this for the first time. PDP has always, since 1999, has been going to court when it comes to presidential as in uh, <laughs> year in year out, they've been going to court. So for the Labour Party, this is a new one for them, especially the Labour Party that is also depleted right now. When you had the uh, Papa, uh, Papa and uh, yeah. and uh, what was his name? Abule. Okay. So when you have these two persons, we are in, in a party that that is not yet structural, oh, not having a solid oh, foundation. Is it is a tough work for them and this. Tough work is on one man, if you ask me, is on the head of uh, P2B. Exactly. Because if you, if you ask, aside P2B, who is no even funding, yes, who is even funding this funding party? Their party? Yeah. 
who is funding this party? Unlike the PDP, you have other governors out there that can be called upon and they will bring money At any for, time. Yeah, for, for their court cases. But this time around, it's just the P2B and maybe the few monies that they were able to. How? 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 It's, it's, it's a really tough call for them, especially for call. P2B. Okay. But the question now is um, does he, will he also show that steam? That he showed during Anambra when he was looking, when he was, go, uh, go, when he was uh, uh, running for this mandate, when he was when going he to court. Okay. okay, will he be able to um, uh, have that same, energy up? Exactly. But mind you, it, it's not like uh, this particular case is not like back in those days that cases will take so much years. We have 180 days to deal with this. Okay, and once it's done, once it's done. Days, 100 days is gone. Exceeds. Yeah. Life One more on. 80 days and we are good to go. By the time <laughs> they go to Supreme Court, that should just be the end of it. The next thing will be start preparing for the next election, which you know that before you know it, before you know, before you say Abba Father, it is. it's here. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, for the Labour Party, um, I think for their supporters, it will be uh, a big blow on, on their faces right now because of, you mentioned the number of voters that came out to vote during the last election. Let us not take away the fact that the Labour Party, okay, the unseated Lagos in the presidential election. Exactly. The home of Jagaban. Jagaban himself. Himself. They unseated him in his home. Okay. After all the things that happened, the attacks. So, so just imagine that even INEC, okay, had um, uh, the IREV and all that working perfectly in Lagos, or just, yeah, let's say it was working perfectly. Do you know the kind of margin that the Labour Party could have pulled out in Lagos? Exactly. exactly. We are talking about in a situation they defeated the incumbent in his state when Le you had... Lagos state is an APC state. Sure. And when they had different kinds of forces Around. that were that were shielding them out, that Both the military, the paramilitary, and the thugs. The thugs. Because there was a woman that was attacked. She was injured in her eye. She still came out with the bleedings, the bandage, and everything, and said she would vote for Labour Party. Likewise, so, others. So in that situation, you saw that these guys were really all out. Okay, so the question now is, in the next election, can they be regrouped again? Mind you, most of these people too have left the country. Exactly. Most Some of them, like you say, have thrown away their voters' cards. have cats. moved on. Okay, so that would be a big issue for Labour. Because we need, we, see, at the end of the day, we don't just want a one-party system. Exactly. It shouldn't be about the APC. Should go around. It should go around. Whoever is competent. Yes, yes. It should be, we should have a system whereby we have at least three to four parties, strong parties that can come out and run an election. Okay? So I wish them well. I wish the Labour Party well. And I hope that at the end of the day, let the will of the people stand. That's my two cents. So if I may ask, what do you feel, how do you, what do you think Peter will be, will be feeling like, like how he'll be feeling, how he would be feeling after yesterday's judgment, like his personal thoughts, how, what, if we would still be motivated to still take actions or he, if he would be backing down? What no, do you no, think? no, no, no. Um, they say f um, fortune favors the bold, yeah. Um, P2B is a bold man. P2B has shown resilience in his life. If you have gone through his career paths, check out his biography, you find out that this man is a man on a journey. Okay? So I don't see him backing down because of what has happened in the appeal court. No. Even if the, the case does not go his way in the Supreme Court, I still don't see him backing out. Because mind you, he has formed uh, a coalition for himself. He has formed an alliance. He has people following him. And from the state of things, you might still have more numbers joining him. Okay. So seeing him to just back down like that, I don't think he should, uh, he, he should go that way and mind you um he needs to keep trying okay um uh, let's not also forget that uh, yes we also have somebody that has been trying 
in the name of uh, Atiku Abubakar. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> so if Abu Atiku has tried plenty well, of these times, continuously. Uh -huh. then what then happens to Kitobi, who also has age on his side, with respect to the Nigerian uh, demography and um, and age, with respect to in, in, in politics, he still has a whole lot of time. He can wait till the next sixteen years. With his age, yes. he can do. He can wait till the next sixteen. But the question now will will the momentum be sustained? So for him, I think uh, this is not the first time he's. Uh, this is not the first time he's been in this situation. Okay, so I think and I strongly think that he should be strong and uh, he should uh, progress with the next phase of the legal journey. Okay, thank you. There is another question on my mind. Let's say they get to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court's ruling contradicts that of the, this um, current ruling. Okay, let's say the Supreme Court declares um, um, Tinubu as invalid. So, do you think the Nigerians, the population at large, would accept? What do you think would be the outcome? Do you think the Nigerians will accept for a rerun of election between um, Peter Obi and Atiku, or they will still advocate for Tinubu to still continue? And before, before they uh, see, before they will ask for a rerun, okay. See, there are issues right now. What are the issues? For the fact that even the appeal court or the PEPC has. Uh, stated that the evidence of P2B not, um, are, are, not so, are not good enough. It's not showing evidence that he won those extra um, 18,800 18, polling units. Okay? I think that's a big issue. Because mind you, they still need to go with what the INEC has uh, published. And INEC published that P2B came third position. If there should be a rerun, okay, it should... If there should be a rerun that does not, uh, they don't state that uh, the candidate of Tinibu has been uh, dismissed, that means a rerun has to be between Tinibu and, uh, and Atiku. Okay, what if the Supreme Court validates that for $60,000 um, drug trafficking case about Tinibu and that makes means, him invalid? Uh, yeah, that would then be, might be a rerun, might be a rerun, or Atiku becomes the next president of the country. This would actually bring conflict in <laughs> You say so. I don't think so. I don't think so. It can be managed. Nigerians are easy, are, are, can move on. Look at what has happened with the Naira and the Pue. What is happening? Even the, the Labour Party that came out with a, the, the strike that happened on Monday and Tuesday, or Tuesday yes. and Wednesday, you saw what happened. How many Nigerians followed them? Like there. Uh -huh. like even even the, uh, rally, the rally that they had, how many people were involved? Nigerians are fending for money and food to, to put on the table. Like Mr. Victor said, Nigerians easily move on. And we actually move on from problems. Since we've lived in worse situations than this, the economical crisis, financial challenges, um, the low GDP, no source of income, little or no source of income, hike in prices of foodstuffs and transport systems. Before we look into the last paper of the day, we'll go for a commercial break, stay put, Drop your comments on the comment section. Do it to follow us on our social media handles. Be right back. Hey there. Are you looking to record your videos? Do your voiceovers and take your professional pictures? Look no further. With our state-of-the-art newsroom, photography, kitchen for our food content creators, and exclusive children's studio, we certainly can deliver the best studio experience. Our carefully designed studio space can bring your diverse creative content ideas to life. We aim to consistently serve value to our customers far and wide. Come, let Tharv Media give life to your dreams. Tharv Media, a slice of infotainment. Welcome back. I hope you didn't miss us too much. Now we move on to the last paper of the day, the Daily Trust newspaper. The main headline reads, why we dismissed Atiku Obey's case, tribunal. Join me in nation building, Tinubu tells opposition. PDP, LP, reject verdict. APC hails judgment. Democracy, people have won, Buhari says. Judgment, difficult to fault. Yadudu, INEC fought petitioners to stand still. Adeboruwa, this story could be found on page 3 to 4 of the Daily Trust newspaper. 100 days of courageous leadership. That is the post attributed to Bola Ahmed Sinubu. Mr. Victor, please help us throw lights 
on your thoughts about the 100 days of courageous leadership. Okay. Um, so there have been celebrations upon celebrations in the country, especially for the, how many governors? 25 governors yes. that were elected? 25 governors. Right? Okay. So, so with the president and other governors that were elected during the February, March elections, they've already done 100 days. And uh, it's been about uh, um, checking back their track. What have they been able to achieve for the past 100 days and all that? So the question now is, are Nigerians better off in the, the last 100 days that um, Tinubu was sworn in as president? The, you know, the, the vibe is there. Yes. That uh, it's been 100 days of tough time for Nigerians. Tougher time. Yeah. Because Bari dragged us into something tough. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm happy you brought out the name Buhari, um, because uh, we cannot uh, shun the fact that uh, he put many Nigerians into this hole. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. He really contributed in putting Nigerians down in this hole. And uh, that should also tell you, it's not about being desperate, about being desperate to, to lead people or to, in quote, serve people. You cannot just be desperate and desperate that at the end of the day you have nothing. To really offer to them and you've plunged them into the but that aside in the hundred days of uh, tinibu what has been able to do um some highs and many lows okay the highs for me there is he is genuinely looking out for investors in the country just like uh, yesterday he was in india and uh, he had some kind of good meetings out there that they were even able to they got about a, was it 14 billion pledges of 4 billion about yes. that of pledges of uh, investments, investments that will be coming in to here to Nigeria. Be it Endorama, be it Bata, be it uh, the steel company out there in, 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 uh, in India that, is, that has pledged to come in and deal with Nigeria, as in run business with Nigeria. And also, he has shown in his, uh, in his uh, portfolios the people that he has uh, put into places that uh, he is also not just playing politics, he but he is bringing it. people that have some good records. Yes, arguably some persons out there, one might also ask, what are you doing there because of their own, let's say, negative records. But you find out that uh, he has shown in terms of mobilizing people that uh, um, we expect some good part from that side. But in terms of uh, the oil subsidy, the petrol subsidy, I think there was a big blunder there because it has, exactly. uh, it has really plunged Nigeria into deeper poverty lines. Exactly, okay. because I think that assuming he wants to remove subsidy, he should have first made available a plan B. At least all these plans he's making now would have done it before removing subsidy. Although we know that this subsidy removal has been planned with the tenor before he's not like he's the one that just spearheaded it. But the plan has been made available in Buhari's time. He wanted to remove subsidy before he left power. But since he is he has removed the subsidy now and he sees that it's affecting Nigeria, don't you think he was supposed to at least make a, a little adjustment? Remember in 2012 in Jonathan's regime. When he noticed that people were protesting and all that, advocating, quarreling, um, or, um, operation occupying Nigeria, within a week after people made noises and rioted, he reduced the price from 97 naira to 87 naira. That was thoughtful. As mean he came and said, okay, we know we share your plights, we know you are going through a lot, we know, because the price just skyrocketed all of a sudden. Okay, that day that they increased this price, I bought fuel an hour ago. Then when I came back in the evening time, the price has changed, the meter has changed. Even people that had um, older stock just increased the price. Okay, it would have been thoughtful if he came and reduced, just at least deduct a little bit. What do you think about that? Well, um, let me first make this statement. Yes, Tinibu came in and just all of a sudden, um, the subsidy regime was uh, destroyed or cancelled. But let's also not forget that the people that ran the election with him, Atiku, majorly Atiku P2B, they all had already said that they are going to do the subsidy. Exactly. Okay, now what are they now saying? They are now also saying that uh, uh, 
if they were to remove, they were also going to allow time. See, politicians are politicians at the end of the day. Are it's you getting me? Exactly. That it did not work for him right now. People are now those politicians criticizing. are now criticizing him, telling him that you are supposed to do it that way. You're supposed to do. see. Nigeria is a complex nation. We cannot take that away. It also exactly. you you will need help. You will make mistakes, and please, when you also make mistakes, you should be able to come out. Don't feel so pompous like the past leader that made the hell feel lot like of you are not uh -huh. Yes, and uh, that you are doing us a favor. You told us you want to serve us, but you are also pulling our shoulders and making it look like uh, um, uh, we are begging you to serve us. So. For the fact that uh, it happened, I think, uh, yeah, we've learned our lessons. Yes, it's bitter lessons. But I also think that um, the, the palliatives, personally, I yes, don't exactly. really like the palliatives. The pattern of the palliative. I don't like anything food palliative in this country because we've seen it before during the COVID. Uh, what they did with the COVID. Yes. We also saw the one that happened just recently in Bayasa last month. So you find out that palliative food, palliative, you know, it's not they working. work. So what were we supposed to do? I think the part of the CNG, the introduction of CNG now, telling all NNPC stations to install the CNG um, um, facility in, the first, in their first petrol stations, I think it makes more sense. Meaning that by the time we convert our cars, or many people convert their cars to CNG. I don't think I'm, I, I want to be the first <laughs> point of people or first you don't want to trials uh, uh, <laughs> to do that because I saw a video of one car that was shattered into two. <laughs> but I don't know whether it, it was a CNG or another thing that exploded the car. But uh, that aside, <laughs> they no uh, uh, Not me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, but more importantly, um, I think you could have uh, waited some time for Dangote refinery at least. Mm -hmm. One will also Dangote is private. Yes, private. yes, we know he's private. And people will say, hey, he will sell his price. Now you sell his price. After all, we are in a capital, uh, capitalistic country. I totally understand. But there was no how Dangote was going to sell at the rate that we are. We found ourselves exactly. in. Okay. So, but the other hand too is that they also dribbled Nigerians. The same APC. Yes, I understand Tinubu is a, a person on this one, but that the party APC it's also dribbled, dribbled Nigerians with the Dangote group. Dribbled Nigerians that by now the the refinery should have started kick started. Okay. So what is happening now? Are you getting me? The president uh, Buhari ran and went to cut the tape. Since he cut the tape, nothing has nothing, happened. Everything was exactly that same. Uh -huh. And there are other projects out there that they rushed to cut tape. Nothing happened. Look at uh, the Nigeria. Uh, they rushed cut tape. <laughs> nothing happened. After are you getting it? Uh -huh. So it's, it, it, it does not make sense. But at the end of the day, I wish him well. 100 days, yeah, for me, it's too short, okay, to really actualize what he has done, okay? But am I hopeful that some... That there, will be there will be some changes. Outcome. I am very hopeful about that. Yeah. Thank you for following us to the end of this program. This is Tav TV's newspaper review. I am Obed Jerry, your host for today. And with me here is Mr. Victor Sioku. And it was a nice time with him. Thank you. Do well to follow us on our social media handles. Do well to like and comment on our videos. Thank you very much. Stay pute.